So, yes, I brought some Swiss Alps for you tonight. Uh, so, yes, I said I'm sure there is a lot of people here like me that have been propelled in a digital world. And we are commonly called non-techie people. You know, people who didn't know that actually the digital world had its own architects, that you shouldn't pronounce the webmaster term in any way or worse, the computer person. So the non-techie people are often the techiest target, right? So for once, let's do something else and make a little bit of joke about the techie people. <laughs> because uh, they are so often looking at you saying like, how will you survive in this world? So obviously we do survive. So my name is Sanya Ozem. I'm a digital project manager at Antistatic. We are based in Lausanne in Geneva. And yes, yeah, so I don't speak English, but French and not Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> And today I'm not going to talk to you about a new tool, a new process, or how to assess risk. And I'm just going to make a little bit, a little bit of fun and sarcasm. So it's a big sarcasm alert. Sorry, sorry if there are some developers in the room. Because being more specific, I'm going to share my quite long journey to the backend dev pick and its hidden communication path. As said, DPM are often the developers' target rights. So let's make some fun about them. What's the context? A team of digital experts in front of you, a brand new job, a lot of incertitudes, hundreds of gaps, a fresh team, and of course, a bunch of backend developers, and a bouquet of tacit rules you'll definitely violate one after the other. Not to mention you're the only woman in the agency and can't even ask for a tampon, yippee. <laughs> Jokes aside, it's hard to enter the digital world. I'm sure you have you may have faced the same problem when you entered it. Coming in the morning saying hello out loud, out loud sorry, and the magic does not happen. Or spending your three first months trying to understand the tools you're gonna use every day because there is no one, there is not one only tool, there is a few more. And this man, <laughs> that was my first backend developer's colleague I had to face every morning. Uh, he was kind of my saboteur, if we speaking about sabotage again. Uh, that was the man I fear every day coming in the morning in the office. He was really my nightmare. Talking about nightmare. <laughs> what were they? Because they were not only one easy peasy nightmare or so happily called challenge. <laughs> there were a few more things I didn't get right away. And I have a list of four things. Let's begin with the first one, the glossary. So, you know, when you enter the digital world, it's not only about the backend developers, it's about the terms. And you have so many terms that you will wrongly use, leading to awkward situation. I remember this first example, I was in a meeting with my boss, so it was one of the associates in the agency, and I don't know why, I suddenly felt like I could be an actor more than a spectator. And the client in front of us didn't know what was a DNS, so I don't know why, I just popped in the conversation, and I was saying like, so my understanding about a DNS, and I continued like that, and then really unsure, and then I looked at my boss saying like, was that right? <laughs> My understanding was that right. Oh, well, that's cute. Thank you, Sonia, for your strong participation and knowledge. So at the time, I realized I had to write and publish my own tech dictionary. And that's what I did, tech dictionary for dummies. So it's in French, but if you want to, to take a look at it, it's on the, the agency's website on the blog part. And yeah, uh, if anyone's interested in learning how you, uh, what's this all about in French, you can go and take a look at it. The second nightmare was the tools, because then you can really go crazy. I mean, from before I was working in an international company as an event manager, and the only thing I had to do is uh, making POs via SAP or open my emails, and that was quite it, or sometimes going on Facebook. So now I came in this agency and I had all this in your face, and I was like, okay, and you know, even something really simple, like you have to say something to someone. What do you do? Do you do it by, via Basecamp or via Highrise or via Todo on Basecamp or via Todo on Highrise or via Slack or WhatsApp or an email or face to face or and you can really go crazy. I mean, saying something to someone isn't simple in the digital world, <laughs> really not. So, but still, the biggest nightmare. 
for the developers. How to engage and communicate with them. I felt like I was trying to engage with some foreigners talking different language. I would say, what is this? And he would answer, das ist ein Gummi, except that I do speak German, so that was a bit clack. And you have to behave. Act is everything was all right, because the developers won't help you. No, 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 first you're just something really trivial. A small noisy fly asking stupid questions. <laughs> so here come my nightmare again. And yeah, I mean, I remember like it was the second or the third day well, in the agency. And I went to him saying like, oh, the client noticed the bug and we were like uh, in QA phase and he talked to me and said like, oh, the client noticed the bug, opened the client's repo on GitHub, uh, reported as usual saying what we have, what we want, put it in the right milestone and plan me on it. Repo, GitHub, milestone. <laughs> Well, 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 and that's the easy one, not to mention other words you have never heard before, like PR, branch, merge, bootstrap, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, of course, he won't help you, train you. Of course, he won't use a thank you or all other, or all other sorry, usual bullet terms that are, that are options. And you can really feel this in his eyes. Hey, sweetie, you should know. And then he continues because it, even it's not enough fun for him. Uh, then he comes to you and says, the browser use and its version are not mentioned. I can't work on it. I uh, will maybe do this next week, maybe not. Please tell this to the client. <laughs> and by saying this, he will say, and can you lower the blind? There is too much light in this room. <laughs> of course, my dear bat, no worries. Um, so, but then you still have a fourth nightmare, which is the client. <laughs> because this is really the nightmare number four. And why? Because how you communicate all this to him, to the client? Uh, how you communicate that, uh, I mean, how, what's the best way to notify your client that your developer just postponed uh, their work on a major issue because of a missing browser vision? Like, and how to vulgarize something you don't understand. That's so simple. And how do you popularize what developers are saying to you? Like their, the answer is no, or their answer is to question when they actually do answer, because that's not easy also. How they do you explain their estimates? Because you have, they write to you an estimate. It's like reading Chinese at some point. You're like, you, I mean, are you really supposed to show this to the client? I, I mean, the only word they will understand is maybe a verb or, I don't know, bullet points, and that's, that's it. So, and their explanation on a boxer, boxers, sorry, is the best. So, like, why is this not working? And they tell you this, and you have to tell this to the client. And that's the <laughs> funny part. So, so, see the problem? That's the reality. Developers have unlimited resources in terms of logic and code and, but let's face this, way less in terms of emotional intelligence and empathy. Sorry, dudes, for once again, if there are developers in here, uh, that maybe fully, fully sounds cliche, but let's just face it. Lots of developers just seem to enjoy being the ar engineer archetypes, and that's also the reality. So right there, you have two choices. Lose your self-confidence, slowly but surely, or sing and pray, yeah, I like to sing, for hope. So, first thing, think positive, of course, like every problem has a solution. After rain comes sun. At the end, everything's gonna be all right. If it's not all right, it's not the end. <laughs> Worrying will never change the outcome. Uh, there are a lot of nice sentences that can motivate you. Still, it will be useless if you don't feed hope and put some energy and work to support it. As real life is not a Walt Disney movie, things don't go better like a magic jack-in-the-box, jumping and laughing out loud. You don't suddenly understand backend developers, hello world, no, it don't come like this. So that's what I've done first, I worked. And work led me to hope, and hope led me to work harder. I knew I had the abilities to learn, to scan and understand my work environment, win confidence and trust, and maybe cherry on the cake, respect. And most of all, and sorry for being a badass poser, but I'm a good project manager and I tended to forget this, even if I don't know first, and if you know, I didn't know first what were PR, branch, bootstrap, blah, 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 I could lead a project. 
So suddenly the challenge, yes, the challenge came as an evidence. I just had to do what I love to, being a crazy and annoying chameleon. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, sorry, time can be your worst and me, but it can also be your sunlight, believe me. And slowly but surely I was finally quitting the word of, in any case she knows what she's talking about, and I um, engaged with the people, we discussed, I asked questions, and word after word, conversation after conversation, I understood and I learned. So, what were the learnings? They were out, so, but I had to sum this up and um, make some kind of, how can, you, can I call this, like 10 commandments? Do we say this in English too? 10 commandments, so let's go for it. The first one. Learn quickly the basics. If you want to fit in your audience, you have to do this. Like, to get an MVG, yeah, it's normally, it's usually an MVP, but I've, it's a new word for today. Like UX, wireframe, user test, user story, GitHub, front-end, back-end, issue, responsive, are a good MVG. Personas, dynamic style guides, gestalt principles, web font, bootstrap, can maybe come as a V2. Things, thing on me, thingy stuff, thing on jig, avoid these kind of terms. I use this a lot when I begin, really, because I found this funny. It was not. <laughs> really not. You have techies in front of you, you have to behave. <laughs> Be specific. Prepare your question. Define the scope before asking. And choose the right moment to talk and disturb your audience because chatting is, not, is annoying. But still, please use the chat or the Shah in French. Don't just open your mouth when something is going in your head. Respect others' words and concentration. Number six, observation, observation, and observation. Allow time for this and be curious. Number seven, understand your audience. Understand each and every profile you have around you. Learn how to talk to them. And because as a DPM, your role is to be a conductor of orchestra, slash psychologist, slash analyst, slash police, slash orator, slash mama, slash motivator, slash smooth operator. <laughs> so in the word of Nancy Lyons and Megan Wilker, technology doesn't drive projects, people do. Number eight, don't wait the others to help you because you will wait along and certainly um, maybe more with developers. Empower yourself alone. This, may be, this can sound a little hard to do, but really, I mean, don't wait for the other one to help you. Show your motivation to learn, and people, then will, people will then consider you and come to you naturally. Number nine, ask, don't assume. That's an easy one. I have nothing more to say about this. <laughs> and finally, be strong or die. <laughs> So, if you choose to live, the sunny days come. That's my, my two colleagues. So, the first nightmare I showed you before, he's not working with us anymore. <laughs> really, it, it was, he was really a nightmare. But these two, but still, these are front-end developers. It changes a lot. It's not back-end developers. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I mean, when you, feel, when, you, when you pass this three to six months, you, yeah, even one year sometimes, uh, and you finally feel that like you can, like, you go driving and don't, you don't think about the clutch anymore, uh, it feels good. You can come in the morning saying hello out loud and finally people will answer you. And you can go to people saying, I have no idea what you're talking about, and they will look at you smiling and answer to your question, which is nice. So we're moving forward. That being said, internal miscommunication is a big challenge. Maybe even worse in the digital world, maybe even worse than the new job itself. But it seems that in the end, it doesn't matter in which industry or with whom you're working, you just need adaptation and patience. And I'm sure if you follow my 10 commandments, I swear you're gonna shine bright like a diamond or maybe more shine on you crazy diamonds. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was not only fun and funny, but really informative. So thank you for doing that. Um, does anyone have any questions for Sonia? Hmm? See no hands. Oh, there we go. Can you run the mic back to you really quick? 
Um, I just wanted to ask, um, when you did your glossary, how was that received at work? What did everybody think? Oh, about my presentation? No, when you did the, the glossary on your... Oh, the glossary. Yeah, how yeah. Did, they, did they like it? Yeah, they did like it. Did it's they actually, help you with it? Yeah, and uh, it was really cool because at, the, at that time, uh, it, I think it was during my first year, and I was like, uh, you know, whenever they were talking about something, I was like, uh. so I don't know, I went to designer, to the UX team, to the developers, and I was like, okay, Give me all the names you have in mind about your job, all the all the, the terms, everything. And then I uh, went to them and I was like, okay, we take this one. How would you explain it with with real words, not developer's word or designer word? Or, and I write, I wrote, I wrote, and then I understood what it was about. And I think they found it just funny because they were like, I was the first DPM in the agency, I was the first woman, and I was the first non-techie. So I think. They were just happy that someone brought a little fun about their job. Yeah, it was cool. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone? Shahina? Uh, will you help me translate your glossary? Oh, of course. Really love to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's give another hand. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.